Good morning. So, obviously I'm doing the version today. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 7. We're going to read the whole chapter of Joshua chapter 7 to Joshua chapter 8 verse 1. Alright, so, um, I'll open up us, open us up in prayer. Dear Lord God, we just want to pray, Lord, that you would help us, God, to depend on you every second and every day, God. We just want to pray that you'd forgive us from all of our sins, God. And we just want to pray, dear Lord God, that um, throughout this day, God, that you'd be glorified, God, through your church, God. And we just want to pray that you'd give us all something, God, to meditate on, meditate about you, God. And please help us get closer to you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So, in Joshua chapter 7, it says, But the people of Israel broke faith in regard to the devoted things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zabadah, son, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things, and the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Haven, east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out Ai, and they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not have all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not make the whole people toil up there, for there are few. Um, so about three thousand men went up there from the people, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai killed about thirty-six of their men and chased them before the gate as far as Sherebium and struck them at the descent, and the hearts of the people melted and became as water. So what's happening right here is, is um, the previous chapter describes how Joshua and Israel went to go capture Jericho. And they, they captured Jericho, but Achan um, actually took some stuff that God told him not to take, and he hid it in his tent. And that's what they're talking about right now. And then they're fixing to go up against another land called Ai, or Aya, or however you pronounce that land. And they, um, they sent some people to spy. And the spies came back and said, don't send all of our men up there because there's, there's only a few of them up there. We'll be fine. We're going we're gonna to get to the city. So in verse number 9, it says, then, um, and then it, oh, then it tells about how they sent about 3,000 men and they got um, beat. And they got chased out of the city that they were trying to capture. And in verse number 9, it says, then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening. He and the elders of Israel... Um, and they put dust on their heads, and Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to give us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would that, um, would that have been content to dwell beyond Jordan? O Lord, what can I say when Israel has turned their backs before their enemies? The Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and will surround us and cut our name of the earth. And what will you do for your great name? Then the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why have you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. They have tra transgressed my covenant that I command them. And they have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen and lied and put them among their own belongings. Therefore, the people of Israel cannot stand before their enemies. They turn their backs before their enemies because they have become devoted for destruction. I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Get up, consecrate um, the people, and say, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, for thus says the Lord God of Israel. So, they got beat. Joshua um, sent spies, and the spies came back and confidently said, let's go take this land because there ain't much people there, and we're going to win. And then they go to this land, and they get chased out of the land by the people, and 36 people um, of their army gets killed. And Joshua is like, I thought there wasn't much people. And then he falls on his face and says, um, God, what are you doing? Are you fixing to leave us? And then God said, I didn't leave you, but somebody stole something and done something that I told them not to do. I will be with you no more. And you know what, what kills me about this story, what's so ironic to me, is that there wasn't much people in the, um, in the land. And the people were very prideful that they were fixing to get the land. And, but then they got chased out the land because God wasn't with them. And that kind of made me think when I read this. Gosh, that, that noise makes me mad. That kind of made me think when I was reading it that, even the smallest things that we think we can accomplish, we can't really accomplish without God. And we could think we can do great things by ourselves, but they're not going to last. They're not going to be the same. We can't do as great things as we can with God. In Isaiah 56, it says that um, 
My ear is not deaf that I shall not hear, and my arms are not um, short that I cannot help, but your sins have separated you from me. And so many times our sins separate us from what God can do. And we think we can handle everything on our own, but we can't, as Israel um, made an example right there. And, but the Lord said, the Lord said, um, get up, consecrate the people. And he said, uh, where did he say that? Um, he says, destroy the devoted thing or something like that. I can't find it. But he said, destroy the devoted thing. And so many times we just want to take and um, keep our sin or keep the thing that's keeping us from God when God just says, let it go. And so many times we can do great things in our lives if we just was to have God. These people would have got this land without 36 people. That later on, they actually got this land after their, um, they burned Achan and his family. They would have got this land without any people, any of their people dying if they would obey God. So many times we bring destruction upon our own selves because we just want to disobey God. So in all of this, my point is obey God. You can do great things when you obey God. Um, I pray this out. Dear Lord God, I just want to pray, dear Lord, that you would help us, God, to depend on you, God, because without you we can do nothing worth any value, God. And we just want to pray that you, we would help, um, that we would destroy anything, God, that keeps us from you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.